All right, we're looking at notes 4.2, uh, the third part, or assignment three is probably how it's going to be on Sophia. We're going to look at natural logarithmic functions in their graphs. In section one, chapter four, we looked at exponential functions, and we looked at all kinds. We looked at y equals two to the x, three to the x, e to the x, where e was defined to be 2.718, approximately. We looked at 10 to the x. We looked at a bunch of different exponential functions. Well, when we got to section two, chapter four, we looked at logarithmic functions with all kinds of bases except for base e. So that's what this video is about. A log function with the base of e. And when you have a base of e, we call that the natural log function because when it's an exponential function with the base of e, that's the natural exponential function. All right, so our work begins by looking at y equals e to the x. That's the natural exponential function. So its inverse is switch x and y, x equals e to the y. But we know we don't like that form, that exponential form of the inverse. So we rewrite it as the log base e of x. If our base is e, we shorten this expression and we call this y equals the natural log of x. So you'll see this common practice right here. So these, all these three forms are equivalent right here. All right, let's come over here and draw the graph of the natural logarithmic function. Like all other log functions, The point one zero falls on the natural log of x with base e. And log functions take on this basic shape. Ooh. So we're going to call this point right here one zero. Because it is. So we're going to name another point on the natural logarithmic function. I'm going to name the point has, that has an x-coordinate of e. e is about 2.7. So if this is 2 and this is 3, e would fall somewhere about right here. I'm going to go up to the graph and just share with you that the ordered pair that represents that point is e, comma, 1. Let's confirm these two points by using the equation y equals ln of x. So I'm going to pull that back over here. If I wanted to plug in the x value of 1 for x in this equation, I'm going to evaluate y at 1. We just have to know that the natural log of 1 based on the point we see here is 0. Let's evaluate the natural log function at e. So everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with e, so this becomes natural log of e. Natural log, natural exponential, understood exponent of 1. We have log properties that tell us that these two undo each other. And when they do, they fall out. Our answer is the exponent. So 1, 0 is a point on the graph of natural log of x. E1 is another point on the natural log of x. So I just want to make sure that we saw the parent function here because we're going to be doing some transformation, some doing some graphing with transformations on that parent function. All right, so this whole video deals with the natural logarithmic function. So here's some background. Now let's look at some natural log properties, similar to log properties, just specific to the natural log function. We saw in our graph that the natural log of 1, meaning x is 1, the answer or y value is 0. We saw in our graph that when our input was e, about right here, the output was 1. These two undo each other. Property 3, if you've got a natural log next to a natural exponential, they'll fall out and your answer is just x, as reported here. What if you take the natural exponential function and raise it to a natural log function? These two undo each other. We're left with just the value of x. 
Similar to the last properties as well, you might remember when we had log on both sides, now I'm going to have a natural log, which just means a base e. If I have the natural log of x equals the natural log of y, then the logs, the natural logs fall out and we're left with the equivalent equation x equals y. All right, so let's use our graph and our properties to do some work. Use properties to rewrite each expression. So I'm looking at this going, what do we do? What property is going to help me simplify this without a calculator? Look at property two, natural log of e right here equals one. And remember these two can undo each other and my answer is going to be the exponent. But I have to have e right next to natural log, the immediate inverse operation. So right here, I don't have e right next to log. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take put in the understood exponent of one and I'm going to bring up e out of the denominator and rewrite it as e to the negative one. Natural log, natural exponential, inverses, they undo each other. My answer is the exponent, whatever's here. Problem two. Notice that this exponential has a natural, this natural exponential has a natural log exponent. Well, they're side by side right next to each other immediate back-to-back -back operations. They undo each other. My answer is five. This is four times ln of one. Well, property one, ln of one, that goes to zero, four times zero, the result is zero. Peek right down at number six. Let's take care of this right away. ln of one, we should memorize that. That's zero, zero times five is zero. Back to four. What's ln of e? ln of e, property two, that's not zero, that's one. One times three-fourths is three-fourths. Oh, I think I skipped ahead. I meant to do four. Let's go back to four. ln of e is one again. 1 times 2 is 2. Looking at 5, natural log followed immediately by the natural exponential. Undo each other, the result is 1 third. Number 8, natural exponential, natural log, immediate back to back, back operations. Undo each other, the answer is 7. Number 9, Natural log, natural exponential, undo each other. The result, I'm left with two. 10, notice this is e times the natural log of one. Well, the natural log of one from the graph is zero. Zero times anything is zero. 11's answer is 1.8. Our final work with the natural logarithmic function is to um, sketch and state some information about that sketch. All right, let's sketch the natural log of not x, but negative x. Okay, well notice the negative's not in front, which would be a reflection through the x-axis. And as a matter of fact, every x is made to be opposite. So if I only dealt with positive x's, the opposite would put my graph over here. That's a reflection through the y-axis. So let's record that. Let me go ahead and draw a sketch of that. And then we'll answer this information. I'm actually going to sketch the parent function natural log of X. If I were to reflect this graph, through the vertical, through the y-axis. One zero becomes negative one zero. And the reflection would go something like this. So what's the domain of this new graph? Well, the domain's gonna go from negative infinity up to zero. 
instead of 0 to infinity on the parent function. What's the vertical asymptote? Well, that didn't change. It's still x equals 0. Do we have a new x-intercept? Yep, negative 1, 0. All right, let me sketch this graph here. Let me first record the transformations based on the parent function, the parent function being natural log of x. Minus 1 is with the x, so we're going to shift right 1. I'm drawing the parent function first, the natural exponential function. I'm going to shift this graph right 1, so this significant point that I'm working off of becomes 2, 0. The graph maintains the same basic shape. Ooh. But be careful here as you drop down this part of the graph. Your new vertical asymptote has been shifted to the right one. You can go ahead and record that here. x equals 1 is your new vertical asymptote, and then x-intercept is going to be 2, 0. In the domain, well, I'm not going to go any further back to the left of 1, so my new domain must be not including 1 up to infinity. So a shift left or right is going to change your domain and your vertical asymptote and your x-intercept. So I wanted just one video to deal with the natural log function as opposed to lumping it in with the other ones.